Hi, I'm Tyler Bletch from NetApp, and this is a demonstration of the performance isolation aspect of the Secure Cloud architecture. The Secure Cloud architecture consists of the server layer, driven by VMware vSphere, the network layer, driven by Cisco Nexus, and the storage layer, driven by NetApp storage controllers. For full details on how each layer builds into a full feature-complete architecture, please refer to our Secure Cloud Architecture white paper, available from your NetApp sales representative. In this video, we're going to focus on how this architecture can provide performance isolation for every resource in the stack. This means that the activities of your neighbors won't affect the performance of your environment. Let's look at a few examples. Let's say you are a tenant of the cloud. What if one of your neighbors hits the filer with an excess of I.O. requests? In this case, NetApp FlexShare can be employed to provide storage performance guarantees on a per-volume basis. Let's see an example of this in action. In this demo, we're going to show two Linux servers running a simulated database workload. This is server number one. We see it's using the SIO DB1 volume. Now, let's take a look at the test script that will launch our workload. It's going to be using a mix of 40% reads, 60% writes, 70% random I.O., and a block size of 8 kilobytes. Let's launch the workload now. Now, on server 2, we find that we're using the SIO DB2 volume. We have a workload generator script with the same configuration as server 1, which will launch now. Now we turn to Performance Advisor, which is a tool that provides real-time performance feedback. It's monitoring the throughput of the two volumes. There are two lines on this graph, a blue line tracking server 1 and a purple line tracking server 2. We see that the two are performing identically right now. The lines are on top of each other. Both are doing around 6,000 IOs per second or 12,000 IOPS total. Now we'll turn to the storage controller. We use the priority command to access all aspects of FlexShare. We see that it is disabled by default. Let's enable it using the priority on command. Now when we check again, we see that the FlexShare has been enabled. Suppose we consider server 1 to be a business critical workload within the cloud. We'll set the priority of its volume to very high. Similarly, we can set the priority of the other volume for server 2 to very low. Let's check these settings now. Here we find that the priority level of SIO DB1, the volume associated with server 1, is very high, and the priority of SIO DB2 associated with server 2 is very low. Now let's switch back to Performance Advisor. We see that the lines have diverged. The total is still about 12,000 IOPS, but the high priority workload in blue is handling 9,000 of those IOPS. So we see that we have fine grained control over individual volume performance, allowing us to manage tenants' relative priority in a resource constrained environment. What if it is the network that is the bottleneck as one tenant monopolizes bandwidth on a crucial link? Cisco QoS, or rate limiting, can be applied to both the physical Nexus switch or the virtual Nexus 1000V in order to regulate this behavior. Finally, what if CPU or memory resources are being dominated by one tenant? VMware resource pools can be configured to reserve scarce resources or to place limits on busy environments. Let's look at a simple example. Here we have the VMware vSphere client showing a cluster of two resource pools, production and test. The VMs we're going to be concerned with are VM1 in the production pool and VM2 in the test pool. In the command prompt for VM1, we're going to run a program that simulates a CPU-hungry workload and we'll see its throughput in the console. Assume this workload is a business-critical application. 
In VM2, we're going to run a process that is very wasteful of CPU resources. We see that our critical application is immediately impacted. We'll resolve this problem using resource pools. First, we'll go into the test resource pool and set its CPU share. We'll also set a maximum CPU utilization, set its memory share, and limit its maximum memory size. By the same token, we can go to the production resource pool and configure large values for CPU share and memory share. In a few moments this will take effect and we'll see the throughput of our application return to its original levels. This all takes place while the test application is still running. When tenants are contending for limited CPU or memory resources, you can use resource pools to prioritize them. If you'd like more information, please attend one of our Secure Cloud presentations, see someone at our booth, or ask your sales rep about our Secure Cloud Architecture white paper. Thanks for watching.